guys <sighs> I've taken a long walk and I've decided to have a sit down I actually meant to do this I wanted to come take a walk I take a video of how this place looks I usually come to these sides to just have a look around and then later on I go back to the house I usually just take um, come to relax my mind anyway <laughs> I've started talking before I introduce myself my name is Rispa Nyabate for those who don't know me um, I shoot lifestyle videos I shoot self-care videos and I also shoot a, a spiritual video every Friday because I'm, a, I'm an Adventist so I share a word of hope every Friday before I begin my Sabbath so today is a Thursday and because I decided to come and just take a walk it's around 4 in the evening um, I also planned to come and share pre-record the, uh, the word of hope today and then I'll share with you to tomorrow so as I speak now it's Thursday <laughs> but I'm going to share this video tomorrow which is a Friday I've shown you this side uh, on the on another video I've shown you like I've taken videos of the views on this side which I really love and I hope you love it I'm actually seated opposite uh, the farm like this uh, where this tea plantation is the farmer the owners of this tea tea, uh, tea plantation uh, they actually live opposite where I sit <laughs> I'm seated in a very tricky place there are people walking here I thought it's not very busy but anyway I don't mind it so today I'm going to share about the story of Pharaoh and Moses and Aaron um, I've been thinking about it so much and sometimes when I read this story I usually ask myself there's a place in this story in the in chapter 7 Exodus chapter 7 where God sends Moses and Aaron to go and uh, to 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 uh, to give Pharaoh a message and he tells them to go and tell him that God wants him to release the Israelites and then part of the in part of the story there's a place where it is written um, there are people passing by let me wait for them to pass by then I continue yeah so there's a place where um, God says that the Bible says that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh and I've always wondered why would God it's very this story is very contradicting the aim of God was to let go of the uh, of the Israelites but then he goes ahead and um, hardens the heart of, of, of um, Pharaoh so I was wondering like what's the point if God wanted to let go of his children he should have just let them go <laughs> instead of hardening Pharaoh's heart but I actually had a brief discussion with my friend and he made me understand this story if you go back in the book of Exodus chapter 5 uh, you really realize there's a time when God sent uh, Moses to give a message to Pharaoh and when he went to Pharaoh and gave him that message what did Pharaoh do he refused to receive the message he actually he sort of like dismissed the message of God and he didn't care instead he went back to the Israelites and to and he, he sent um, the almost like the team let's just say a manager <laughs> the one who was supervising the work imagine Pharaoh sent him back and told him now that these Israelites have uh, come to me to ask for for you know to uh, to 
like give me a message from God saying they are they want to be set free so that they can serve God it seems like they are not you know they are not busy they must be very very idle go back and make sure you give them double the work they are doing give them more work imagine so when the Israelites heard about this they felt so bad they actually resented Moses and Aaron they're wondering what were you doing going to Pharaoh to give such a message now the burden is on us and I felt really sad for them because now they 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 lost sight of the main thing God wanted to set them free so that they can be free to to worship him but anyway it didn't end there in the book of in chapter 7 uh, God again sent Moses and Aaron Moses was a bit um, uh, he was a bit reluctant because we all know Moses was a um, stammerer so he wasn't able to pass the message well so he asked for help and God uh, uh, said uh, give him Aaron the, to help him so Aaron was the one who was talking on behalf uh, of Moses to pass the message so anyway when they went they started performing uh, you know like showcasing the power of God through different plagues that were that were you know God was doing different miracles doing different things to prove that he's the one to, who has sent Aaron and Moses and finally Pharaoh let them go we you can read the whole story so I will read chapter 5 and chapter part of chapter 7 of Exodus so chapter 5 says Exodus chapter 5 afterwards Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said this is what the Lord the God of Israel says let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness Pharaoh said who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel, Israel go I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go then they said the God of the Hebrews has met with us now let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword but the king of Egypt said Moses and Aaron why are you taking the people away from their labor get back to your work but the king of the, um, reading um, Exodus I've repeated I was a bit distracted so Exodus chapter 5 verse 4 continues but the king of Egypt said Moses and Aaron why are you taking the people away from their labor get back to your work then Pharaoh said look the people of the land are now numerous and you are stopping them from working that same day Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people you are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks let them go and gather their own straw but require them to make the same number of bricks as before don't reduce the quota they are lazy that is why they are crying out let us go and sacrifice to our god make their work make their work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to lies then the slave drivers and the overseers went out and said to the people, this is what Pharaoh says, I will not uh, give you any more straw. Go and get your own straw wherever you fi can find, but your work will not be reduced at all. So the people scattered all over uh, Egypt to gather stubble to use for straw. The slave drivers kept pressing them saying, complete the work required of you for each day just as the, when you had straw. And Pharaoh's slave drivers beat the Israelite overseers they had appointed, demanding, Why haven't you met your quarter of bricks yesterday or today as before? Then the Israelite overseers, Israelite overseers went and appealed to Pharaoh, Why have you treated your servants this way? Your servants are given no straw, yet we are told make bricks. Your servants are being beaten, but the fault is with your own people pharaoh said lazy that's what you are lazy that is why you keep saying let us go and sacrifice to the lord now get to work you will not be given any straw yet you must produce your full quarter of bricks the israelites overseers realized they were in trouble when they were told when they were told sorry when they were told um 
you are not to introduce the number of bricks required for you each day. When they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said, May the Lord look on you and judge you. You have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. So this was after, sorry, this was after Moses and Aaron had given a message to Pharaoh. This is chapter 5, chapter 5. Uh, chapter 4, chap, a part of chapter 4 towards the end is where Moses, no, let's just concentrate on chapter 5. Moses sent a message and he went and told um, Pharaoh and you see how Pharaoh was rude. He actually d disobeyed God. He disregarded God and said, who is God? to come and ask for such favors. So he disregarded it and disobeyed God. And you know, I have learned something. When you disobey God, he actually gives you time. He doesn't react that, that time. Even you, if you realize you're in a situation where you feel like God is not reacting, maybe you have been offended one way or another, relax. Imagine the, same, the person who has offended you is a child of God just like you so God gives them time time to do what is right and he actually speaks to them and it is upon them to choose what to do and to choose the right like to do the right thing or the wrong thing but God does not take long when you disobey God when he asks you to do something and you disobey God this is exactly what happens to you in chapter 7 and I'm, uh, I'm referring to the story of Pharaoh and Moses in chapter 7. If you read chapter 7 going onwards, you will realize that God now became, like he now started to send out plagues to the whole of Egypt. Just to prove a point, he, he started to fight harder and harder through the plagues that he was sending to the land. The first plague was the plague of blood, the plague of frogs, the plague of nuts, the plagues of flies, the plague of livestock, um, the plague of boils, the plague of hail, the plague of locusts, the plague of darkness, the plague of the firstborn where every firstborn was being uh, killed. And that is when finally Imagine how stubborn was Pharaoh. Finally, he he actually didn't he heeded to the voice of God, but she go pandered like he wasn't willing to do it. He did it because he he he, he was now pushed to the edge, Kabisa. That's when he started doing what is right. He decided to do what is right, and even after that, he sent out an army to go after the Israelites. Sorry guys, I'm a bit distracted. I didn't choose, this was not the best place to sit, but it's okay. So as I was saying, finally, after sending out all these plagues, he finally uh, agreed to let go of the Israelites, but he let them go uh, like, he, he wasn't willing fully. That's why he sent a full army to go after the Israelites. And even though he sent out the, uh, the army to follow them, they didn't they actually died on the way because god opened up the sea uh, the, was it the sea yeah and, or ocean, I don't know. and then the israelites passed through and when the army of egyptians was about when they started following them god like he the water he he closed down the 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 <laughs> the pool of water and it killed the egyptians who were following the Israelites. I have learned things, many things here. One thing in chapter 7 you will read and you will realize God mentioned that he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Sometimes we take that word um, and we take it literally but if you read chapter 5 and then you read chapter 7 you realize 
and I learned also, my friend clarified this for me, the Spirit of God had left Pharaoh immediately after he disobeyed God. The Spirit of God had left Pharaoh and so automatically his heart was hardened. hardened. When the Spirit of God leaves you, what is left? It's the spirit, it's the, the devil, the evil spirit that remains behind. That's why in life we have, we either choose good or bad. And when we choose good, we have the Spirit of God within us. If we disobey God, then the other spirit, evil spirit, takes over. And that is why the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. So when God says he hardened the heart of Pharaoh, it actually means that he left the spirit of Pharaoh. He left the, the spirit of, of, of God, left uh, Pharaoh. Like the spirit that was now acting within him what was not the spirit of God. And when my friend explained this to me, it actually made sense because God gives you time to do what is right. He gives you time to do good or evil. And when you disobey him and the spirit of God leaves you, you now, you now usher in the spirit of evil and you be, your heart, your heart is, is even is hardened. And that is exactly what happened to Pharaoh. And that is why it was so hard for him to do that. In fact, he was, he was fighting God. It's very sad. Unfortunately, some of us in some cases have fallen victim of cases where you have to suffer because someone somewhere has chosen to harden their heart. And do not worry, it doesn't take long. God will intervene the same way he intervened and fought for the Israelites. And eventually they were let go. It took a while. They actually doubted God, but eventually God answered their prayers and they were set free. And guess what? When they were set free, I even forgot to mention. They came out of Israel, Israel Egypt with... They actually carried things from Israel. It is mentioned in the Bible, um, somewhere in the Bible. They carried gold, they ca uh, carried, you know, just many things they had carried from, they carried from, e from Egypt. And this was, they were actually told to do so. Do not live empty handed. Carry as much as you can, and which they did. So, do not, do not feel bad. God is still there and he's, he is strongly working his way. Some people might not heed to his voice. They might not choose to do the right thing. And in the midst of this struggle between good and evil, evil being the spirit of evil that dwells within someone to a point where they choose not to do the right thing. When this battle is going on, you will suffer. But eventually, when the will of God comes to pass, you will be set free. And everything will work according to the will of God. So, like I was saying, one thing I have learned is, just don't harden your heart. When you harden your heart, you choose the spirit of evil, which now takes over your heart. Another thing, the will of God must come to pass. Another thing, God will always send people to come and help in your situation. He will perform miracles. He will do anything so that his will is done. And then, do not be afraid. And even though we are human and sometimes we fear, sometimes we doubt, try and fight that feeling. Trust in God and everything will be okay. The story of Pharaoh actually is a lesson to me and it should to other people. And it's such an encouraging word for me 
because I know what it feels to deal with people who are so they're so <laughs> I don't know how to describe them people with who have totally hardened their hearts to a point where they have no logic in their hearts they have no remorse they have no mercy they have no the spirit of understanding is actually not within them instead of doing the right thing they go the wrong direction and they feel nothing about it i have dealt with that but the story of arau encourages me god is still at work and his will must come to pass today i'm sorry i was a bit distracted please read through chapter 5 chapter 7 read through up to chapter uh, chapter 8 because i also need you to read the place where when the israelites were leaving they left with uh, they left with things and they were asked to carry they didn't leave empty handed i need you to read about that also the power of god you see even when the devil chooses still to pursue you god will still protect you he will still cover you he will still be with you all through the way this story has really helped me understand a lot and one very important thing is the place where the matter where the bible says the god hardened the heart of pharaoh has been clarified to me god does not intentionally harden people's hearts to to a point where your heart it is them who choose to have the wrong spirit within them when god refers to when god says in the bible that he hardened their hearts he actually means that he left he left pharaoh Alim Toka, the spirit of God just left Pharaoh and the spirit of evil dwelt within him and see the result such a this story <laughs> I have learned a lot and I hope you will learn a lot too I have to go back to the house I hope you have learned something and I hope you will be blessed and i hope you will have a good weekend for those who are going to church on saturday happy sabbath uh, may you have a good happy blessed sabbath and for the rest of you may god bless you and may god be with you be encouraged i love you all bye for now mm -hmm.